Hey everyone, after playing six hours or so of the Division 2 open beta today, I have found some cool stuff and we're going to talk about it. Cool. First off, I want to apologize about my voice. I've had the flu and it sucks. But having said that, let's talk about this beta that's out uh, March 1st through March 4th. It's gonna be a fun time. I had a lot of fun with it. After the first private beta, I really enjoyed what I played, but the problem was there was a lot of technical difficulties, namely the Delta. Aside from that, there was a lot of falling through the floor, people getting stuck in the walls, things like that. These are standard open world things, but things that people had hoped Massive would get worked out. Well, today I do have to report in and say, for the most part, they are worked out. I did not receive a single Delta error. The entire time I played today, I fell through the world once, which I think is pretty good. And I got stuck in precisely zero walls, which was really awesome. It's great to see that Massive have tuned this game up so much. Uh, the optimization is a lot better. I had at least 144 frames at all time when I was playing, no matter what was going on. Uh, that was for my setup. I'm using a GTX 1080 and a Ryzen 7 1700. Uh, I've got some some pretty pretty good hardware. Not the best, but not the worst. Uh, and I felt like the optimization is really on point. The game is great if you enjoyed The Division 1. If you like that gunplay, if you like that style, it's a really, really good experience because you're going to get the same thing you got from The Division 1. Very, very consistent and definitely in a much better technical state than the last beta left off on. I think it was really great that the last beta was so long ago because now we have some response from Massive, some real tuning that's happened. It's not something like Fallout 76 or Anthem, where it's coming out two weeks later and the technicals really can't get worked out in that time. Uh, there have been awesome, awesome, awesome things done in this engine. And uh, it's got the same old shooting, the same old looting. Personally, I love cover-based shooters. I remember when the first Division came out, I think I played it for a month straight without touching another game. And then I kind of went back and played some Destiny for a little bit back and forth and overwatch stuff like that but man did i always go back to the division for some fun now and again uh survival came out that was great uh you know 1.8 really changed everything and i feel like this is an extension this is launching at 1.8 if you play the original division and i really think all that's awesome so let's talk about this beta just a little bit the missions were really all the same from the private beta so if you played that you know what's going on there was an extra mission in there, which I thought was really fun. So you had to like infiltrate a TV station, kind of reset the signal from the bad guys. They're hijacking, blah, blah, blah. And then you fight at the end the uh, Darkest Timeline version of Sterling Archer, which I thought was great. After most of that is done, you can go over to do some side missions. You can do some uh, Dark Zone. The Dark Zone mission is the same, but it's still a lot of fun. Kind of setting up everything in the Dark Zone. The turret section, of course, is brilliant where you don't really have to do much of anything at all but uh you know it is what it is but when it comes to combat the combat is exactly what you would expect out of the division a uh, really really snappy cover system with the brilliant uh cover to cover mechanics that massive developed for the division one still in place and they really really feel much smoother at least to me on the division two so far it really really is a testament to how well Massive really dug into what makes a cover system fun and engaging in a game. Which, you know, I love tactical third-person combat, Mass Effect, Uncharted, where you kind of have to think around the large groups, but you have your peripheral vision. I have loved third-person shooters with cover systems for that reason forever. And this really does just feel like a very polished version of The Division 1, which is great for someone who's a fan if you're a fan of that combat and that cover system of the Division 1, you're going to absolutely love the Division 2. 
Now, in terms of content, it's really looking like The Division 2 is going to have a lot of it, which is a problem that basically every looter shooter seems to have, is the content. Well, anyway, Massive seems to have actually taken notes here during the development of The Division 1. There seems to be a lot of content so far. Supposedly, there's something like 40 hours in the main story and the side missions, which is great. 40 hours before hitting the end game. Now, let's be realistic because we're going to find those guys who basically are going to jump on this and no life at 24-7. I would do that if I didn't have a job and responsibilities, but here we are in America. What we have to deal with is the realistic thing that it's probably going to take 25 to 30 hours or someone who's relatively dedicated, which I still think is pretty good. In terms of content, we have missions, we have side missions, we have collectibles. There's always going to be the dark zone to go into. Uh, and it looks like the difficulty spike starts to kick up rather quickly. Uh, I was definitely having a little bit of trouble near the end of the primary missions. And maybe that's because I was trying to rush through it a little bit. But I was still, you know, I was still pretty confident in most of my skill. However, I will say that once I took note of what was happening that caused my death in a scenario, I was able to very quickly mediate whatever caused it the last time. And, uh, you know, I think that's how a good game should be. You should be able to learn from your mistakes. And bravo to Massive for making something challenging if you go in haphazardly. That, I think, is going to be a big thing, and I suspect a lot of people on day one will do that, thinking, oh, it's going to be easy to first, you know, first 20 levels or whatever out of 30 or 40. It looks like 30 is the cap, but who knows? They might raise it. So let's just say out of 30 levels, uh, if you think, oh, the, the first 10 are going to be super easy, well, you might, you might have something uh, coming your way. Last thing we really need to talk about is whether or not the loot is there. And for me, the loot is there. I'm okay with loot being real world-esque. I played the first division. I know what I'm getting in for. And I also know that we're not seeing the last of the guns yet. Now, I don't know if the end game specialists are available yet because every time I tried to access them, I got hit with the Delta. And that was unfortunate because I wanted to get into that, get some footage, but who knows? Maybe it'll come up if I have time this weekend. Uh, we can give thoughts on that. But, you know, overall, the loot seemed pretty evenly distributed. I would get a piece or two every mission or side mission that would help my overall build. I love the fact that there's gear sets. They apply different bonuses. And that starts as early as uncommon gear, which you get at level three, level four. You start getting that stuff. And that's awesome. Once you have three pieces of gear you're set i mean you can do some hardcore damage to stuff and there's some great set bonuses it's look, it looks like there is access to more uh rare loot like a blue quality loot uh that i already got a piece of so you can get that rarely it looks like through the regular campaign version i'm sure if you get to the end game side and especially get to the you know, where your progression is going up through Dark Zone stuff, just in the normal campaign that you're going to get more even at level eight. But for right now, that's what I was able to experiment with. Guys, I just want to say at Massive, you guys have done a hell of a job with this. This is very awesome. If you are a fan of the Division 1, you are thinking about the Division 2, get it. One, they're using anti-cheats on PC. Two, there absolutely, absolutely, absolutely will be the content there. I can tell you that now. And three, the end game. The end game is all coming. It's going to unfold over a year of free DLC. Yeah, there's a year one pass. You don't have to buy it, though, in case you were wondering. You do not have to buy it. People who do buy it get a couple extra skins, weapons that are probably going to be good just for early game. And then three or seven day early access to the new content, which is not really that big of a deal. If you want to spend 60 bucks and have a game that I feel is actually going to deliver on the promises of the looter shooter with content and updates, man, go for this one. Looking, looking good. Guys, I want to thank you if you watch this video today, trying something a little different on the channel here. 
Uh, make sure if you're new here to subscribe, if you made it to the end and hit that like button, dude, that'd be super cool. And if you want to share this video with a friend or family member who might be interested in the division two and want to hear what a goofy dude has to say about it. All right, guys, I do want to thank you again for watching and I hope to see you soon.